In this bass lesson, you are going to learn five beginner-friendly Motown bass lines, mostly by James Jamison, we think, that are not only super easy to get started with, but they carry the entire song. Hi, I'm Luke from Become a Bassist, and if you're looking for incredible Motown lines that people can sing along to and dance to, then check this video out. Welcome to Become a Bassist, where it's all about insanely practical, no BS bass lessons designed to get you playing better bass, having more fun, and becoming the best bassist you can be. And today, it is all about Motown. Now, some of the coolest bass lines ever recorded are from Motown. However, a lot of them, they're, you know, pretty challenging, right? You know, James Jameson, very synonymous with Motown. He loved to play very active lines, lots of notes, quick rhythms. But that's not all of them. Some of them are actually very beginner friendly and are a great entry point into Motown and you know, just amazing for any bass player to know in general. It's almost like essential knowledge, required knowledge. Now, we're kind of breaking up the rules straight up with the first one because it's not technically a Motown recording, but it definitely has a Motown vibe. Our first one is Jackie Wilson's Higher and Higher. Check it out. Two, I want. This is such a great bass line. It just stays the same the whole way through the song. It's awesome. It's just three notes the whole time, super driving rhythm. Now our notes on this one are A, fifth fret on the E string, B on the seventh fret, and finally this D, fifth fret on the A string. So we're starting with two A's, and then B and D. So we get A, A, B, D, and then we get a little sneaky B, almost like a ghosted note, and then back to the D, and we play that twice. Yeah. Now, when we actually play with the track, we actually have to start before beat one. We're actually going to start on beat two before the drums come in. So I'll just do it with the slower track for this one. Two, a one. Yeah, so notice how when we started with the track, we actually started before the drums came in, which can be a little bit tricky, but also if you want, you can just, you know, have the drums start and you can come in where you want, as long as you're starting with, you know, beat two. With the faster track though, the performance tempo track, two, a one. Yeah, just those three notes the whole time. It's just freaking amazing. By the way, if you want the tabs, notation, and backing tracks I'm using in this video to practice these bass lines for yourself, they're a free download on uh, becomeabassist.com. Just click the link in the description and you can download them there. Now with the Motown label specifically, it's not always 100% clear who played on which recording sessions because Motown didn't always credit their musicians. Or if they did, it sometimes just said, you know, the Funk Brothers, which, you know, isn't super specific. They could have meant Jameson or Bob Babbitt or, you know, a couple of other bass players. There's even been defamation cases brought up over who played on what recordings and the crediting, all that stuff, it gets very messy. That's uh, on Motown, but this track was actually released by Columbia, who actually did credit their musicians. So in terms of, you know, Jameson's certainty, whether or not Jameson played on this, it's 100%. Jameson actually broke his exclusivity agreement with the Motown label to play on this recording. Although I'm not sure if the exclusive thing was ever, you know, written down or how it was enforced. But in any case, let's move on to our second bass line. It's the four tops, I can't help myself, but you also may know it as Sugar Pie Honey Bunch, and it sounds like this. One, two, three, and... And then it repeats over and over again. Again, such a cool bass line. And once you learn the shape, you can just kind of take it around uh, the bass, you know, depending on what chord you're starting on. So we're actually starting on this C right here, third fret on the A string, and then playing G and A, third frets on the E string. And slowly our rhythm goes like this. So we're getting C, G, A, C, G, A, C, C, G, A, C, ba, 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 over and over. That's our shape. 
Yeah, so all we have to do now is take that shape around the bass. So we play the one on the C starting, uh, you know, the starting one twice. One, two, and then we go to the G, fifth fret on the D string, and just plug in that same shape twice. So you end up playing G, then D, and then E. So G, D, E, G, D, E, G, G, D, E, D, uh, G. Oh, I can't talk that fast. <laughs> but then you take the exact same thing and just start it on the A string. So you get D, A, and B. At the very end of the second bar of that one though, you do play an E, seventh fret on the, uh, the A string right there before plugging in the shape for F. So starting on the third fret right here, F, C, D. So third fret, third fret, and fifth fret, but only for a single bar. Uh, before going up to the G again. But this is the one bar that's a tiny bit different. We do get that G, D, E, so fifth fret on the uh, D string, then fifth and seventh fret on the A string, just like our original shape. But at the very end of that phrase, we get this. G, A, G, fifth and seventh fret on the D string. And this is a figure that, you know, it's almost like a whole band plays it pretty much. So you just need to put that in there, du, 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 and then repeat the whole thing. So with the slower backing track, we'll get this. Uh, one, two, three, four. Up to the G. Down to the D. E, F. Yeah, just like that. And up to speed with the practice track. One, two, three. And oh, my bad. <laughs> e F. Again, such an iconic line. Now on this track, it's relatively certain that it was the man, the myth, the legend, James Jameson playing bass. So in terms of Jameson certainty, I'd give this one, you know, 95%. Now who played what on the Motown stuff can get a bit murky, but I will put a link to a super interesting article about it all that actually cites some primary sources in the description if you're interested. Now the other thing I need to mention before we get too far is Tone. Now the Motown sound, uh, bass sound at least, is pretty much always linked to Jameson and he mainly used Fender precision basses with flat wound strings that he also famously never changed. So it's very, you know, dark, thumpy sound. Now, I haven't got a P bass obviously and I don't even have flat wound strings uh, on this particular bass. But if you do want a Jameson-esque sound on your own instrument, it's a good idea to turn down your high end or your tone knob down a fair way to get that really kind of thumpy kind of sound. You want this kind of thing rather than, you know, this kind of thing. Yeah? All that higher end clarity is great sometimes, but not if you're trying to emulate the kind of Motown bass lines. So bring those trebles back down and we'll jump to our third bass line with the Temptations with a truly iconic bass line. Papa was a rolling stone. Check this one out. One, two, three. Three, four, one, two, three, and two, three, four, one. Just like that, yeah? It's just a three note line, but it is just so cool. Now our notes are A flat and B flat, so fourth and sixth fret on the E string. And then we also have a D flat, fourth fret on the A string. We're gonna start with A flat going to B flat. Boom, boom. And keep those, you know, pretty short, pretty punchy. You don't want them to sound one, da, 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 da. You know, it's not a, you know, opera or something like that. It's All the notes are nice, short, punchy. Uh, now next, all we do is just play that D flat, that fourth fret on the A string. We get two of those. Uh, then A flat once more before ending on B flat on beat one. Two, three, four, one. Da, da. Again, keeping all the notes nice and punchy. With the track once more, it sounds like this. Ah, uh, one, two, three, and. Two, three, four, one. Two, three, four, one. Two, three, and. You can also play it with a pick. Three, four, one, two, three, and. Two, three, four, one. 
just like that. Yeah, pretty easy. The trickiest part of this one is making sure you give the rests their full value, right? Don't skimp on the rests. They're super important. Don't kind of jump in early. Don't go two, three, four, oh, jump in there. You don't want to do that kind of premature articulation kind of thing, you know. Um, just have the hi-hats playing in your mind the whole time. Just be super mindful of them and you'll be fine. Now, how certain was this line a James Jameson thing? Not certain at all, actually. Some claim it was Jameson, some say it was Eddie Watkins, Leroy Taylor, or Bob Babbitt. In fact, Bob Babbitt said on his forum in 2008 that he and Jameson were on the same session, but then Jameson walked out on it uh, at some point. Although he also says that he didn't actually remember that happening. That was people telling him stories that they remember about him that he's kind of forgotten. <laughs> so like I said, it can get super, super murky. So in terms of Jameson certainty, this is low, maybe like 20%. More than likely it's not actually him since it sounds you know, like it's picked rather than plucked. But still a great Motown line. Now our next bass line though is almost certainly James Jameson. It's the Supremes, Can't Hurry Love. I want two, three, four. just like that. This line carries the entire song. Take everything else away and you've still got everything you need right here. It's like a masterclass in creating a great bass line. Now we're starting off by playing this B flat, third fret on the A string using this rhythm. Now the rhythm here is the most important part. You can get away with a lot if your rhythm is solid, but we do start off on that B flat. It doesn't just stay on that B flat though. Uh, when we get to the verse, we get this. So one kind of round of that rhythm on the B flat, and then we go to an E flat, first fret on the D string, uh, and play just two of those. By the way, same rhythm, the only thing that's changed is the notes. We just get two of those E flats instead of B flats, and then everything else is pretty much the same. But instead of playing B flats all the way to the end in that bar, on beat four, we get B flat going to C on the third fret, and that sets up our next note, the D on the A string, fifth fret on uh, the A string right there. So we get... B flat C D. Now when we get to that D, we hit that twice before going down to the G, third fret on the E string. And by the way, again, the rhythm has not changed here. We're still using the same thing, essentially. It's great. Uh, but instead of G's all the way through to the end, dun, dun, bom, 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 we have an open D at the last beat of that bar. So we have D, D, G, 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 D. And that sets up our last little thing where we go to our E flat again. We get three of these, one, two, three, and then up to the F, third fret on the D string. We get two of these, dun, da, 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 before we're going back down. So we get two high ones, two high Fs. Bum, bum. Then we go down to the octave. So I can't go down that low. <laughs> low F, first fret on the E string, and then a little walk up, F, G, A. So first fret, third fret on the E string, then an open A, and then we repeat the whole thing. So with the slower track, it's gonna sound a bit like this. One, two, three, four. Yeah, and up to speed. I want two, three, four. Once more. Yeah, amazing bass line. Now this one is a little bit quicker, but if you want the slower practice tracks uh, that I've been using in this video, they're at the same link in the description below. But now how does this one rate for uh, Jameson Certainty? The personnel for this one is just listed as the Funk Brothers, uh, but this one is about 99% Jameson Certainty. Now our final bass line though is another Temptation song, this one written by Smokey Robinson. It's Get Ready and it sounds like this. One, two, three, and... Yeah, pretty sweet. 
sweet, right? Now there is actually a chorus in this song as well, but this is the main riff of the song. Ah, oh, pardon me, can't talk and speak at the same time. Talk and speak, talk and play, <laughs> what am I talking about? <laughs> now, uh, this one is relatively easy and it just uses this kind of little box shape right here. So we've got D and C on the A string, fifth and third fret, and then G and F on the D string. Again, fifth and third fret, that's our little box. Yeah, so we're starting with two Ds, and then straight down to the C, and then straight back up to the D, and then straight back down again for two more Cs. And if you need, just loop that single bar over and over until you're comfortable with it. And then, when you're ready, you can add the second bar. It starts off the same, D, D, C, but instead of going back to the D again, we go up to the G, fifth fret on the D string, and then down to the third fret, the F right there on the D string. And then finally, at the very end of the bar, we have an open A. And again, you can loop this bar over and over until you're comfy. So you get... Yeah, and then combine the two bars at maybe a slower tempo. So let's grab a slower drum track. One, two, three, and... Oh, my bad. <laughs> busy thinking about what I'm gonna say next. Uh, but the next step is to just take it up to speed and play it with the, you know, the faster track and that'll sound like this. One, two, three, and. Yeah, such a cool bass line and how simple is it? Now, how certain is this one, Jameson? Reasonably certain, probably around 90%. The publishers of the book Standing in the Shadows of Motown, they say it's him, uh, although, and this will be controversial, but it seems like there were some errors in that book that attributed songs to Jameson that he didn't actually play on, which I didn't actually know until uh, I did some digging into that. Uh, and that journal article I mentioned before, that has the full details and the, the link into that is in the description down below. However, Get Ready isn't really disputed as a Jameson thing, so that's why the, the certainty is reasonably high. Now, like I said, these are great entry-level Motown bass lines. Not too challenging, but I do want to make it as easy as possible for you to play along with them and really master them and practice them. So if you do want all the tabs, notation, and all the tracks from this video, including the slowed down practice tracks, then you can get them all for free by clicking the first link in the description or right here. Just fill out the form on that page. I'll send everything to you and you can be practicing these lines in just a few minutes. So hopefully I'll see you in there.